The search is on for a new home for state prisoners. Good evening, I'm Melissa Schroeder. I've seen a lot of people dressed up in their red, white, and blue. You can see a crowd of people coming in right now. And man, what is a party without all this fabulous food? I'm surrounded by about 30 students from the campus who have been telling me what they believe happened. Apparently, somebody's been pulling a fire alarm here since, you guys said Wednesday, right? So we posted the question on our Facebook page. The prison would create 250 jobs. Would you want it built in your city? If you've been in the Scott area at all today, you've probably seen some of these posters and flyers. Here at headquarters right now, you can see many of the cars have left since the 5 o'clock hour, but I'm told there are still volunteers out in the field. Apparently, it can get into your mouth when you're sleeping, and that's why it's known as a kissing bug. I know, awful. As if bugs Gosh. aren't scary enough, right? To give you an idea of just how much paperwork that is, these documents cover the entire length of a basketball court. The Arkansas Surgeon General says this is the first time we're seeing the positive effects of President Obama's Affordable Health Care Act. And you're seeing through his eyes. We wanted to give you an idea of what these officers see as they're driving through the streets. Disappointed and cold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's still cold out here. Honestly, Kevin, I think it depends on who you ask. The uh, plaintiff's attorney said he's expecting same-sex couples to be lined up outside courthouses come yeah. Monday morning and to be able to apply for their marriage licenses. Uh, we're standing right now in the middle of what used to be the Wright family living room. Not much left after those storms except for a couple of couches here. And look up at the sky. The reason you can see the sky, the roof torn off. There also used to be a second floor here, and the winds blew that away as well. I want to take you over here to show you something pretty compelling. It it was Sunday night. Randy Wright was at work when he got a call that his wife Angie was hunkered down inside this closet waiting out that storm. He rushed home, got here as soon as he could, and found out thankfully Angie would be okay. And as you can imagine, the two have not been separated ever since. In fact, they decided to make their commitment permanent by holding a very special wedding that's unique in every way. Eric Olson is really struggling to get by. It's only been five days since his wife's murder, and while he knew the funeral would be difficult, he's doing his best to hold it together for his 11-month-old little girl who was in the back seat of the car when her mother was shot. The pain runs deep for Eric Olson. This is a, uh, I mean, everyone knows this is incredibly tragic. As he said goodbye to his wife, Samantha Olson today, Eric also rededicated his life to the one person who reminds him the most of her, his baby girl. You know, when I look at her and I look at all her smiles, I just go, you know, it's going to be all right. You, you know, we've got something really fantastic and special. It's a, it's a blessing. Yeah, and a little she piece is, of her is yeah. still going to be Yeah, she still looks a lot like her mom, so, yeah. you know, she'll always be there. The couple's daughter was in the back seat of the car when someone shot Samantha last Wednesday. Eric can't bear to think about it. The, the crime they committed is, is... It just doesn't make sense to him. Beyond just a murder. Because they robbed a child of her mother. He doesn't know if it ever will. And they robbed me of a, a wonderful wife. Mm -hmm. You know, they stole a lot of love out of our lives. Eric finds some comfort in the hope that his daughter is too young to remember what happened. And maybe the first night or two. I, I think she looked forward for just a little bit, but she's, um, she's really clung to me. Uh, which I expected. And while she'll grow up without a mother, he plans to give her enough love for the both of them. I've really got to, you know, take the pieces of my life and put them together mm. and move forward with my child. You know, I've got to raise her uh, the way I wanted to and the way Samantha would want her raised. Eric Olson also told us he wants his wife's killer to be caught. He says he can't believe that someone could shoot her in broad daylight and just drive away, Kevin. Hundreds of fans showing their support and cheering on the Razorbacks win or lose in the capital city today. Good evening and thanks for choosing KRK. I'm Melissa Schroeder in for Brittany. The Hogs may not have been able to pull off that win, but local business owners sure did. KRK's Ken Buffa explains how this game helped bring in the money. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Ken. Well, volunteers holding another search for a missing Stuttgart teenager. 15-year-old Cassie Compton disappeared more than a month ago, and police still have no leads on her case. KRK 4's Leah Uko joins us with more on why this community put aside its differences for one cause. Leah.
A lot of emotion out there. Well, the retrial for a Garland County man accused of killing five people in 2009 has been postponed. The victim's family members say the defense requested a continuance because it could not find several witnesses in the case. Samuel Conway is accused of shooting four family members and a family friend in a Percy home, stealing rims and TVs before setting the mobile home on fire. Former President Bill Clinton continues his Arkansas campaign tour called Your Vote Matters. This video we're going to show you is from his stop in Hot Springs last night. This morning, Clinton, along with other Democrats running for office, visited Hope. The campaign, free and open to the public, wraps up tomorrow with stops in North Little Rock, Pine Bluff, and Forest City. For times and locations, just go to our website, ArkansasMatters.com. Many restaurants rolling out lower calorie menus with your health in mind. Why you can expect the trend to stick around for a while. New research reveals many large chain restaurants are introducing new lower calorie items. The Johns Hopkins study found these new food and drink options contain 60 fewer calories than their traditional menu items. Not bad. It's a trend that's expected to continue because of new government rules requiring restaurants to post calorie counts on their menus. Sticking with the health theme, hundreds of kids spending their afternoon in the capital city getting fit. The event at the Metroplex called Move Your Body was put on by the Little Rock chapter of the Lynx Incorporated. The group is working to promote health and wellness to students from riding bikes to shooting hoops. Kids found a number of ways to keep active today. We want them to get their BMI down. In addition to some giveaways, students got to watch healthy cooking demos at the event. Welcome back. Just a gorgeous day outside for the football game, for mm -hmm. any activities, taking a walk, taking a hike. Just great out there. But what's the forecast look for the rest of the yeah. weekend? Don't mind a little rain after this beautiful weather. Right. Have a great night. We'll see you again tomorrow at 5. You know, safety is always at the forefront of our minds, but, you know, you tend to forget. And then when something like this happens, um, it just reinforces the importance. As a real estate agent herself, the news of Beverly Carter's murder put Cynthia Liu on alert. Definitely hit home. More women like Liu are jumping in the ring and looking into self-defense classes since Carter's disappearance last week. It's definitely got people's attention. The owner of Westside MMA says using your knees and elbows will typically be the best defense. There's not one move that works in all situations. Sometimes self-defense is just about surviving. Folks over at Don's Weaponry say the best defense is to carry a weapon. Oh, I've probably sold 10 guns to women the last two days. You know, normally I sell to women three or four a week. The store's owner says more women, specifically real estate agents, have been buying guns and ammo this week. Women are also buying things like pepper spray to protect themselves. A million votes. That thing would hurt. Bad. Stun guns are also a popular defense weapon, but before buying anything, well, we got tasers and stun guns. Make sure you know how to use it. Yeah, you know, I've got a gun. I'm safe. That's not true. And whether it's a stun gun or a punching bag. After the death of Beverly Carter, many women that increases your chances of surviving are making sure protection is a priority. In Little Rock, Melissa Schroeder. K4 News. That help is coming in the form of rain. With more than nine inches of rain this year compared to the same time last year, there's no burn ban. This map here shows all Arkansas counties in the green. Last year this time, all but five counties were in the red, so people couldn't even set off fireworks. However, it's important to point out here, some counties did go from a low to moderate threat for wildfire danger, including Pulaski County. They're the ones in yellow. But it's nothing to be concerned about right now, so fireworks stands are expecting big lines leading up to the 4th the July holiday. We have the mortars. Uh, we have the uh, Roman candles. Those would be fun. If you're looking to buy fireworks, we have everything that you want. Tim Holder is your guy. Big, bad, and loud. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty exciting. It's going to be big, bad, and loud. And loud. <laughs> From now until the 4th of July, you'll find him under this big blue and white striped tent off Crystal Hills Road. He's the manager at Uncle Sam's. And we want to make it as, as enjoyable and memorable as we can make it for him. Oh yeah, there are many Roman candles. The scene under the tent looks a lot different now than this time last year. The 2012 drought it was awful. Also dried up business here. But what a difference a year and an extra nine inches of rain can make. We just saw the stand and we're like, oh, let's stop. We love the 4th of July. It's exciting. To give you an idea of just how much that burn ban affected businesses like this last year, say this is sales from 2012. This 
would likely be sales for 2013. The manager here says he's expecting a 75% increase. Hopefully it's not going to be awful. It's going to be great. No matter how pretty, big, or colorful the fireworks, yeah, those would be fun. Last year, people avoided them, and a large fine that went along with setting off fireworks during a burn ban. It was just a rough year, so we were real excited this year to have as much rain as we had in the spring. So while the 4th of July is a holiday to celebrate our freedom. Get out and, uh, you know, support America's independence. Appreciate you. Fireworks stand owners will be celebrating something else, too. Off the chart sales. Come the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, it's going to be, it's going to be swamp. Thanks to the generosity of Mother Nature. And keep in mind this 4th of July burn ban or not. Many cities don't allow people to set off fireworks inside city limits, so make sure you look into that first. Welcome back. Here are Fox 16's Hot Shots of the Week. At number five, a bear took a stroll on its hind legs. This is amazing. Through a neighborhood in New Jersey. Look at that bear. It even appeared to chat with a person recording its journey on video. It actually kind of looks like a person. Apparently, injured bears sometimes walk upright to compensate for wounded paws. And someone at the local police department confirms there is an injured bear in town. Number four, an incredible rescue took place in Western Australia. Listen to this. A man slipped and became trapped between a train and the platform. One passenger acted quick, stopping the train from leaving. Then dozens of others joined in to help the rescue. Look at all those people. A line of people formed along the train and began pushing on the cars. Surveillance video shows the passengers tilting the train just far enough for the man to free his leg. Number three, police in Des Moines, Iowa, released dash cam video of a pretty dramatic pursuit on Wednesday evening. Officers spotted Larry Gowan, a registered sex offender with outstanding warrants, near a child care center. Wow, when officers tried to stop him, they say he led them on an eight-minute chase, mostly through local neighborhoods. Gowan is now charged with attempted murder and felony eluding. And number two, a truck barreled into a fish market last month. Now we have video of the incident as it happens. The camera on the bus in Jacksonville, Florida shakes, and then the semi comes into view, slamming into the Beaver Street fish market. There it goes. A large portion of bricks immediately fall off the building. Crews demolish the rest of it the next night after the crash. Five people, including a child, were hurt there. And number one on this week's countdown, a speeding car crashes into an auto repair shop in Lake Worth, Florida, killing one passenger and injuring a driver. And it's all caught on tape. You can see it here. Amazingly, the owner of the shop is not seriously hurt after being clipped by the car. You see him there. The shop owner says it's a wake-up call to cherish every day. I bet so.